If part of your business includes selling or offering time to your clients, then this video was made with you in mind. In this video, I'm going to be breaking down how you can do this very simply using an integration between Fillout and Airtable. These are no-code tools that anybody can use to build and streamline their own processes without needing to know any code. So if learning how you can better sell your time to your clients is of interest to you, stick around and let's get into it. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Gareth and this is Gap Consulting. It's my mission with this channel to help you unlock the full potential of your no-code tools, allowing you to start to reclaim your time thanks to automation and streamlined processes. Now, before I get into the heart of this video, I first want to invite you to join me for some templates. If you're kind of new to Airtable and no-code tools, you are going to love the five templates that my team has built using the five most common use cases that we see with our clients. You can download Download those templates for free and get introduced to the idea of how no code could help you within your organization. Grab those at gapconsulting.io slash templates. But without further ado, let's hop on into my screen. I'm going to start by explaining to you what's happening on the back end in Airtable. And then we're going to take a look at Fillout and how it integrates with Airtable. Now, if you're new to both of these tools, Airtable is a cloud-based database and Fillout is an advanced form software. And so they really work hand in hand. If you have information that lives in Airtable, you're going to love to be able to kind of query that information and fill out and customize a user experience. I'm going to show you exactly how this all works and comes together. But first, we're starting in the backend database. So follow along with me. If you already have an Airtable account, go ahead and create the same tables that I'm going to demonstrate here. I have a users table. I have a transactions table and I have an hours table. So let's take a look at each of these, right? The user is really straightforward. It's who is this person? So we've got a name and then we have an email address as well. Now there are different ways that you can invite people to actually access this. You could manually create a user in this table and then allow them to log in using the form, or you could build another form that says, Hey, you know, create your own user account. In our example here, we already have the data living in Airtable and I've got two different email addresses. By the way, if you're ever testing email addresses like we're going to in this example, right before the at symbol, you can add a plus and then whatever character, and this will be treated like a different email address and yet it will still go to your actual email address. So my actual email is gareth at gapconsulting.io, but here I've created a different user and this email is recognized differently because it's gareth plus one at gapconsulting.io. It's still going to go to my Gap Consulting inbox and it, I'm still going to receive the emails there, but it's thought of as a different user. So this is perfect for testing purposes. All right. Now the next component here is this user's table links to transactions. Now we didn't actually build this for our example because I want to get into the scheduling and the logic and all of that in the more advanced form, but you could also build a transactions form where people can go to this form and pay you. This can be done in fill out. It has an integration with Stripe. And you can make it so that when somebody submits a transaction, you record who it was that transacted, you can record the dollar amount, and of course, also how many hours they are purchasing. Now I've done videos on this exact topic before, so I'll go ahead and link to them in this video in the description so that you can kind of reference those. But essentially what we're going to do is ask people, how many hours do you want to buy? On the back end, we'll do the math for them. We'll have a price per hour multiplied by the number they want to purchase, and we will record that transaction total here. And then of course, depending on how many hours they purchase, we will create hours for them available in our third table. Now this is the hours table. And I, when I'm pre-selling hours, I really like to create a record for each hour. Now this is not going to be a good fit if you have larger projects, obviously, where you're offering, you know, over 10 hours at a time. But if you have some sort of uh, product that incorporates with a little bit of uh, consulting or expertise on the side, this might be a really good fit. For example, you might sell a course with a couple of hours of consultation. And in that case, this is a perfect idea for you. Or if you're just selling a few hours, but at a very high dollar amount, then this also will work for you. So how does it work? Well, we're going to create a different hour and it will be when created a blank date. So no date will be filled out here. Once somebody books on this hour, then we will fill out the date. And then 
after we have completed the date or the consultation, we will mark it complete here in the outcome column. So the way this all comes together then is with a little status. And so this status is gonna calculate based on certain conditions. If the outcome is already marked complete, then we know that the status of this hour is complete. If, on the other hand, the date is filled out, then we know it's been scheduled, but not yet complete. And if neither of those things are true, then we know it is an available hour. So we have these three different options, available, scheduled, or complete. And so it can only be one of those status. Now we could include additional status here. I'm not getting into that in this video. We're trying to keep it simple. But of course, because these hours, when they are created, they are linked back to the transaction, right? A transaction comes in and says, hey, somebody just bought five hours. I'm gonna create five hours. And then as they schedule against those hours, we're going to update the date and time here so that we know and account for the fact that this client is using the time. And then lastly, when they are completed, we will mark them complete so that we account for the completion of that time as well. So that is the structure that we're putting together here on the back end. But now let's get into the fill out front end component. The first page that we're gonna use here is a login page type in Fillout. So you can create your own Fillout form and follow along with me here. If you're not already a Fillout user, please consider using our affiliate link. It's a great way for you to show some love back to the channel. But we'll come in here and we will say make a Fillout. And then again, the first page that we're gonna create here is the login page. So that just looks like this. We say add page here, and you see that you've got a couple of different ways that you can, uh, you know, add different page types. I already have a login page in my form, so it's not gonna show me another option here because I can only ever have one, but bring that login page in. Now for the next part, we need to get fill out talking to Airtable. And in order to do that, we're gonna go on the left-hand side of our login and simply say connect it to a database. Now, if you're not already set up with an integration, you'll have to go over to the integrate page here and you can go through the steps to connect Airtable. And what this allows you to do, if we were to look at this integration, is we are saying, hey, our information here, it lives in our users table. So we want to uh, set up a connection between Airtable and Fillout so that when people log in, we're checking against our system and saying, does this user exist in our Airtable database? So that information actually lives out here. If we go back to the form itself, we are setting up that integration. So we're saying, hey, I'm connected to the database. I want to use this database. In our example, I called the base selling hours demo. What is the user's table and what is the email field? Pretty straightforward stuff. Now, if that email does not exist in our user's table, that person will not be able to log in and take additional steps inside of our form. But now for the next component. Now, when somebody authorized accesses our app, then we want to show them, hey, welcome. And this is how many hours you have left on your account. So how can we do this component? Well, we need to have a number for the available consultations. So back in Airtable, we've set this up. So we have five consultations here connected to this one transaction, right? And we need to know how many of them are available. So on the transaction level, we can perform a count. And we say, we wanna count the number of hours that are linked to this transaction but we only want to count those where the status is available because the other ones have been used. They're either complete or scheduled. We don't want people to schedule against consultations that have already been used. So we only want to count the available ones. Now we have to roll this up to the user level because this is at the transaction level and a user could have multiple transactions. They might have bought five hours and then by five hours again, they could have a total of 10 available hours. Well, in this case, they only have that one transaction, but we wanna roll up all of their available consultation counts on their various transactions. So let's pop back to users now and we have a roll up field and we're looking at the transaction records and we're looking at the available consultations field and we're summing them. So this way we're gonna take the sum of all of the available consultations that this user has purchased. And we've called this available consultations and it's important to note that it lives in the user's table. Now, let's pop back into fill out and we can write this information here by referencing the user table that we've given fill out access to in Airtable. And we do that by just hitting the at sign 
and you'll see that we get this pop-up here and we can go into the user login component and we see all the different fields that live in Airtable. This is the record ID, which comes from Airtable. It's not really helpful here, but we have the name of the person, we have their email, we have their transactions link, but most importantly for this, their available consultations. So I'm bringing these two components in, the name and the available consultations. And in the case where they have consultations still available on their account, then and only then do we want to allow them to schedule. So on our button here, we've set up some logic. We say, hey, this is gonna take you to the next page, right? But we only wanna show it under certain conditions where the available consultations from the user, that's right here, that value must be greater than zero. If it's zero, they don't have any available consultations on their account and we do not want them to be able to book. So we will hide this field or this button. Lastly, they're going to go to the scheduler page. Now, if you didn't already know, Fillout has scheduler built right inside it. I've put together a scheduler page really quickly and easily here and it integrates with my calendar, allows people to book on my calendar, but only if they have available consultations that are gonna show up here. So let's take this out for a spin. I've published this particular form and I wanna make sure that it works as expected. Now, the one part that we didn't really dive into yet here is what do we do within the automation? Well, number one, if somebody does not have available hours, you can see that I have hyperlinked right here to where they can buy more hours. So you could have that separate fill out form that we discussed previously that allows people to add hours to their account. Now, the other thing that we have to consider is how do we log that hour? So we would want to set up the workflow inside of this form that says when they book this consultation, we will go into Airtable and update the hours, find one that's available and update it with the date and time that they booked the next consultation for. Again, this step is outside of the scope of this specific video, but I'm sure you can understand conceptually how that would work so that you can update the date here. And once you update a date, then of course we know that this will reflect the new status, thereby reducing the number of available hours and this client will not overuse the amount of time that they've paid you for. So let's go ahead and test this out and see what it looks like. We're gonna share the form and just open it up in a new window. Now, the first thing I need to do is log into this form, right? And we want to validate who it is that's accessing the form. So if I go back into Airtable, I'm just going to grab my first user ID right here using my actual email address and drop into the form and drop it in. Once I click verify, I'm going to get a code sent to my email address. I flipped now into my email. I'll copy this code back into fill out now and I'll paste it in here and this will then verify me and I will be able to get in. So I'm going to resume my submission from my last uh, appointment here. So when we dive in, because I was already experimenting with this on the back end, I'm taken directly to the scheduler, which I do not want. So take me back to the page that I would see next in line. And what's happening here is it's welcoming me. It knows who I am. And this is the username associated with that email right here. And then it knows how many hours are available on my account. Of course, I can click here to go purchase more or I can go to schedule an hour. It takes me right to the calendar integration where I can get on the books and use another hour. But what happens if I sign out and I sign in as someone else? Let me go back into Airtable now and I'll grab Sally's email address, which yes, is still mine with a slight modification. So we'll pop into the form and I'll paste that in and I'll verify the email. Here I got that verification code. I'll grab it and paste it back here in my login and we'll continue. Now, uh, and I'm gonna say new submission here. Now logging in as Sally, it knows who I am, but also that I have zero hours left. And you'll notice I don't have the ability to book against my banked time because there's no time remaining. I hope you see how this simple integration can do so much to help you streamline and organize operations inside of any kind of professional services firm. We work on these types of projects all the time for our clients, but I hope that this video has helped you get the basis or the foundation so that you can start building it for yourself. If you got value from this video, we would love it if you could give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. Of course, if you need a little help, feel free to swing by our website for it. But most importantly, Keep on building.